In the picture, it's just the other way around. The valve uh, is uh, this way is the right valve, and what's been removed is the left valve. So this one, the head end is facing this way, and this one, the head end is facing that way. So everything is reversed from the picture. So that's a little confusing. And then, of course, this cross section is a cut through here, looking at the end. So, anyway, uh, let's see. We've got, uh, first of all, how do the shells close? The two shells that are attached by two major muscles here, they're called adductor muscles, A-D-D-U-C-T-O-R. Um, where are they? Yes, here. These, this is the anterior adductor muscle because the mouth and the head is at this end. The area where the foot comes out is anterior, so that's how you sort of orient yourself. Where the water goes in for filter feeding and out at the other end where the siphons are located, that's always posterior. So the mouth is anterior, mouth and foot are anterior, siphons are posterior. So that gives you sort of your orientation as to which way it's uh, flowing here. Um, so anyway, we have two adductor muscles, an anterior adductor muscle, which is this one here, and a posterior adductor muscle, which is here. And those go between the two shells, and that's how the shell is closed. It these adductor muscles only close the shells. How they actually open is merely by, rele by relaxing these muscles, and there is a what's called a hinge ligament up here. It's kind of like a, a stretched area at the top that when the, when the valves close, it stretches this hinge ligament, it's called, sort of like a rubber band, so that if the animal it has to forcibly contract these muscles to close the shell against the hinge ligament. It's stretching it. If those muscles then relax, then the hinge ligament causes the shell to open. That's why if you uh, steam some bivalve, like if you're cooking uh, mussels or clams or something, when they open up, you know they're dead because basically they're, they can't hold the shell closed anymore. When they're there and they're alive, they're holding the shell closed for dear life. And when they're dead, they relax. That's about as relaxed as you can get, being dead. And <laughs> the shell automatically opens up. All right, so you have your anterior and your posterior adductor muscle. Um, as far as the way these organisms work is that they uh, are filter feeders. And these are the lungs. I'm sorry, these are the gills, which they've cut the gills away. The gills, these brown things here that you see, went all the way up to here and covered it. As you can see, they went the full length but they removed part of the gills to be able to show you, you know, some of the internal anatomy. So these gills here have um, uh, little holes in them, microscopic holes, and they're covered in cilia. And the beating of the cilia pulls water in through the uh, incurrent, what's called the incurrent siphon, which is ventral. This is dorsal where the shell is attached at the top and where it opens in the bottom is, is ventral. So this is dorsal, ventral, anterior, posterior. So what happens is the beating of the cilia on the gills for, uh, brings water in here that goes down through the gills, through the little holes in the gills, and um, ends up in the, uh, comes out of the top of the gills here in this chamber, and then the water goes out through the excurrent siphon, which is dorsal. This is ventral, this one is dorsal. So the water goes in here, the water goes out there. Okay, so when they filter feed, what comes in is water with food, the food gets stuck here. Actually, it's not only food, but also other inedible things, like maybe bits of sand or something that they, that they can't eat. So all of that gets caught on the gills, and then it moves to the, down to the bottom of the gills and anterior to this structure right here called the labial palp. Let's see, yeah, here they've got it labeled right here, labial palp. This is for sorting, okay? sorting into edible and inedible food. So whatever gets caught on the, the sieve or the screen of the gills here and filtered out, then it goes to this structure, two layers here where there are a bunch of ciliated grooves inside, and depending on the, uh, the uh, texture of the, of the particle, if it's like a grain of sand or something, it goes one way and goes towards the posterior part of the shell where the animal secretes a mucus, sticks it all together, and waits until the shell opens up to flush that out. It wants to get rid of the sand, doesn't want to eat the sand, there's no nutritional value. All the phytoplankton and the microscopic bits of food that are caught go in another direction and come out right here by the mouth, which is where, um, where the food goes, into the mouth. So it gets caught on the gills, 
Everything is, whatever is caught on the gills is sent to the labial palps for sh sorting. It sorts it into edible and inedible. The inedible goes to the back of the shell to be excluded or uh, gotten rid of. The food goes to the mouth, into the stomach. And then you can see the brown intestine here. This is all the intestine, which is inside the foot. This whole big hatchet-like structure here is the foot. And inside the foot is the digestive tract going around here. And so you can see where the foot has been cut. It's cut the digestive tract in a number of spots, these brown things. There are also uh, hemoceles, or blood cavities, which are what these little uh, red structures are here. Um, and uh, the yellow material are the, is the gonads, okay? So inside the foot is the gonad material, either eggs or sperm, um, the digestive tract, the intestine, and various blood sinuses. And then on the outside, it's covered in muscle tissue, and it's used in burrowing, that kind of thing. Um, okay, as far as the circulatory system goes, there is a heart surrounded by a pericardial cavity. This is the heart here. And then the blood goes from the heart just to, through these various blood sinuses. It doesn't stay enclosed in arteries and veins. Um, this is the, uh, the upper part of the shell here where they're attached together. This is called the hinge, or the, the umbo, which is this dorsal portion of the shell, the oldest part of the shell. They, actually, the way they grow, this part of the shell here is the oldest. And as they get older, they add more and more and more. They just keep getting longer and longer. You can see all these little lines here. These are growth lines where new shell has been added. This is older, is younger than this, and the, this is younger than this, and so on. So when the, when the clam starts out, it's just a little clam. This, this part of the shell, the embo up here, is the oldest part of the shell. When it was just a little tiny thing, that's pretty much all there was. And as it's grown, it's grown in this direction and gotten bigger and bigger. Okay, what else do we need? Um, I think those are the main things that I'd like you to, to know. Know the foot for locomotion and burrowing. Know the labial palp for sorting of food into edible and inedible. Know how the shell is closed by the anterior and posterior ductor muscles. Know how they feed by the use of the gills and the cilia on the gills and how the water comes in through the in-current siphon and goes out through the ex-current siphon. This is clean water that's been filtered. What's coming in is bringing in water with food and debris, sand and things. Okay? Any questions on that? If not, let's, uh, while I got you here, let's do the... Uh,